Welcome to another episode of Coding Corner. I'm Goose. I'm Julian. Today we're going to finish the Tank Wars game that we've already started building. Last time, we made the player controlled tank in its bullet. This time, we'll be making the enemy tank. Ah, the all-important enemies. To begin, open up the project we were working on last week in Scratch and select Sprite 3. Start a stack with a When Green Flag Clicked block. From Looks, add a Switch Costume to Blank block. Set the drop-down to Costume 1. Below that, from Motion, add a Go To XY block and set both values to minus 100. Add a Forever Loop. Inside it, from Motion, insert a Point Towards block. Set the drop-down to Sprite 1. Below that, still inside the Forever Loop, create two if-then clauses. Get their triggers from Sensing. Set the first to Dark Grey and the second to Light Grey. Inside the first if-then, from Motion, put a Move negative 10 steps block. In the second, a Move 2 steps block. This stack of code is now complete. It ensures that the AI tank is always pointing and moving towards the player's tank and stops it from driving through walls. Now let's start another stack with a when green flag clicked block. Below that, put a forever loop. Inside it, place a if then clause. For the trigger, go to sensing and insert a touching blank block. Set the drop down to sprite two. Inside the if then loop, from control, insert a stop blank block and set it to other scripts in Sprite. Below that, from looks, switch costume to explosion. Then from sound, play sound recording boom until done. Then from control, stop all. The second stack makes the AI tank blow up when your shot hits it. Now let's start the third and final stack for the enemy tank with another when green flag click block. Add a forever loop below it. Inside that, add an if then clause. From Sensing, set the trigger to Touching Sprite 1. Inside the if then, from Control, insert a Stop Blank block. Set the drop down to Other Scripts in Sprite. Below that, from Looks, add a Switch Costume 2 block. Set it to Costume 2. Then from Sound, insert a Play Boom block. Finally, from Control, insert a Stop All block. This third stack makes the AI tank blow up when you ram into it. Of course, since the enemy tank is always shooting right at you, this is easier said than done. On to Sprite 4. This is the AI tank's shot. Start with the one green flag click block. Below that, from motion, go to Sprite 3 block. Below that, from looks, a set blank effect to blank block. Set the drop down to ghost and the value to 100. Below that, add a forever loop. Inside it, place a wait blank seconds block. Set it to two. Below that, from looks, insert another set ghost effect two block. Set the value to zero. Below that, from motion, go to sprite three. Below that, from motion, point towards sprite one. Then from sound, play sound recording pew. Below that, insert a repeat until blank loop. For the clause, insert a blank or blank hexagon from operators. For the left clause, from sensing, insert a touching colour dark grey hexagon. For the right hand clause, from sensing, a touching edge hexagon. Inside the repeat until loop, from motion, a move seven steps block. Then, after the conclusion of the repeat until loop, from looks, a set ghost effect to 100 block. This stack of code controls the AI tank's shot, making it fire every two seconds, and ensuring it doesn't go off the edge of the window or through solid objects. Now onto the fifth and final sprite. Sprite 5 is your targeting crosshair. This one's easy. Start with a when green flag click block from events, then from control, a forever loop. Inside that loop, from motion, add a go to blank block. Set the drop down to mouse pointer, and you're done. The game is complete. Now to give it a test. As you can see, your tank constantly moves towards the mouse pointer and the enemy tanks constantly move towards you. Since you always fire directly ahead, you have to aim and fire quickly. Then dash out of the way before the enemy tank can shoot you. 
Ah, ingenious and made with so little code. In a video game, simple rules can often lead to complex results. This effect is sometimes called emergence. Ah, so making a good game doesn't mean writing loads and loads of code, it's about including the most interesting rules and challenges. Exactly, that's why tinkering with code is so much fun. A few simple changes can have a huge effect on how the game plays. Ah, in the lesson notes which we've included here, you can find a more complex version of the game, or you could try making a version yourself. Remember, anyone can have fun learning to code. Inspiring stuff, Julian. Well, that's it for this episode of Coding Corner. Goose out! Julian out. Thinking of a game just about me, just yeah, goose just, everywhere. Just can you help me with no, that? No, Darren. No, Darren. All right, let's get to work.